That was awesome. Um, so before we go any further, I'd like to invite you all to go visit the MasterCard Priceless Surprises pitch in the gallery. It's the massive elevator. Um, it's a lot of fun, and what they're asking you to do is share your social good ideas that could change the world. And it's for a good cause, so make sure you stop by there. So now I'm pleased to introduce the next conversation of the summit, which is entitled, The Next Chapter in Global Education. So please join me in welcoming Sarah Brown, President of Their World and Executive Chair of Global Business Coalition for Education, Kailash Satyarthi, Nobel Laureate and Founder of the Global March Against Child Labor, Keith Yamashita, Founder and Chairman of SY Partners, and Miriam Jom, Co-Founder of Africa Gathering. All right, let's have the next panel on education. Hi everyone, we've got a short sharp session where we're looking at education and looking exactly at the next chapter. So you will all be aware of the challenges for education and what we have to reach. But the bottom line is we're talking about nearly 60 million children who don't get a single day at school and the barriers for them are immense. And you've heard a lot about refugees in the conversations today. Half of those children reaching no school are refugees, and the other half are trapped in other circumstances, making that unreachable for them. So we have an amazing panel today to try and address that. And we're going to jump right into what works on the ground. And I'm going to start by going talking to Mariam, who's here from Spot One Global Solutions. Mariam, as a businesswoman in Africa, you know what works from a business point of view, but you're also really engaged with girls and what the barriers are for them for entering education and in the longer term, the workforce. What works on the ground, Mariam? Thank you, Sarah. I'm so honored to be here. Uh, what, what really works is giving an opportunity to girls and having campaigns like Up For School where the policymakers are being accounted for. That really works. Uh, pushing for every single girl to have access to education that works, uh, creating uh, technology centers, for example, works very well, uh, giving them tools, uh, you know, and giving them an opportunity to even go at the door where they can have access to uh, technology that works very well. And when you talk about uh, you know, access to technology, what, what does that look like? If you're a young girl in Africa and someone tells you there's a technology center somewhere reachable for you, What's the equipment that's there? What's the learning that's there? What I can give an example in Kampala, for example, a young lady called Barbara. Barbara was at a Makere University, and she didn't have access to internet connection. She didn't have a space where she could go, a safe space where she could go. But we opened the biggest tech hub in Uganda where she can go and have access to computers and see all the people sitting there working with her. I think that sometimes it's not just a computer device, but it's a safe space where she can go and find herself. There are boys and there are other people out there that she can relate to and she can sit down and say, oh, wow, there's a space. I can go, I can code, I can all do all this stuff. Those are very, very important. Uh, safe places, I think, creative spaces. We have like in London or in New York where anybody can have access to those places are, are, are good. So we're talking about tech clubs which are outside a formal education system and outside conventional schooling. Exactly. There's that challenge in Africa too. Keith, if I can turn to you. Keith, you have 20 years experience consulting with corporate leaders and really giving a, 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 human, a, a human face to what those solutions can be. Children actually going to school, the technologies that might, might access or outside of school in the clubs, what sort of innovations are possible and what do we need to do to make that interact with real humans trying to really learn? Yeah, so all change is human, right? And so the first step is you have to have access. The second step is you have to have an inspired place to go. So one of the things that I've been working on recently is called the XQ Super School Challenge. And it's a challenge here in the United States to completely reinvent high school from scratch. And it's trying to make a high school that um, really is fit for students of this modern age. So if we think about uh, disadvantages come in so many different forms. And here in America, it's largely getting access to the skills building you need, the ability to solve hard problems, the ability to work across diverse cultures, very much like what we're doing here today. And what's allowed this to be possible is what a phone can do, what you can do in the, put in the power of your hands today, 
And what the super skilled challenge is, is opening up to all of America to come up with new ideas of what schools should actually be, to actually rethink the American high school. It's interesting, because you're saying you're putting it out to a public for them to come up with innovations it's, it's and It's really ideas. an open call. So if you think about, a lot of systems are changed from the top, and that's, that's wonderful, but we now have an ability to put in all of our hands, what is the ideas? What will galvanize people? What kind of school could we build from scratch? And all of these are made possible by technology and where that meets goodwill and great thinking. There's a lot of talk at the moment. One of the big themes is about failures as much as about successes. It's a very sort of of the moment way to talk about it. If you're looking at all kinds of ground up ideas, grassroots suggestions and innovations, presumably there's huge opportunity to make the best of the failures as much as the successes. Um, maybe I'm uh, optimistic, but I think failure is, is the road to new success. And so what XQ, the Super School Challenge, is trying to do is put in the hands of all the people in the United States an ability to try these new ideas and to share them using the web, to share them at our website, and to share the kind of great new practices required to build a new school in America. And from everyone's success and the journeys along the way, we're going to build a new American high school. So we're building our new American high school and we're creating our, our tech hubs in Africa, which is going to lead me to you, Kailash. I know we're really honored to have you here. We were all so delighted when you made Nobel Laureate and we're able to celebrate the work that you've done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, you know, I mean, Gordon and I have known you over, over many years and I know that it was probably going back about 10 years where you actually had Gordon out on the march uh, with you, um, with, the, with the Global March for Child Labour, where Kailash has um, reached so many thousands of children across Africa in his work as an education activist, but also in, in the appeal against having young children working. And uh, you were one of, uh, one of our great uh, role models for how you mobilize action and get, get young people's voices out there as we have the bigger cohort of Global Youth Ambassadors today. Champion of Education, but looking at the challenges for India, and I know you look at work in India, but also look globally, globally. too, but, but starting with India, the ideas we're talking about with, with clubs and sp safe spaces, with innovations coming through from, from the grassroots for learning, how does that translate to the life of a young child, girl or boy, who's been rescued from child labor. I know you have tens of thousands of children you've been able to take away from dangerous, you know, pitiful jobs that they're working on and actually have the chance for an education. But what, what opportunity could that open up for them? Well, uh, first of all, let me tell you that if millions of children in the world are trapped into slavery, they are sold and bought like animals. If they have no childhood, no freedom, no future, I come across many children who stitch footballs but can never dream to play with the real football. I come across many children in Africa who are working day in and day out in producing cocoa beans, but they have no dream to eat a chocolate it's a black spot on the face of entire humanity. Mm -hmm. Education is the most important tool in breaking this shackle of slavery. Mm -hmm. So while working in India for the last 35 years against child slavery, but I understood immediately that abolition of child slavery and or child labor and education for all children are the two sides of same coin. Mm -hmm. So. I, I'll give you a couple of examples. Like, we rescued a girl who was uh, about to be married. She was a child laborer and about to be married as a child bride. Somehow she was freed, but then she told that she's getting married. We brought her to school, and after a few years, she started fighting against child marriages in her own village and child labor too. She brought all the girls of her village into schools. And she said that education is the only way to ensure that we are free. Free from marriages and free from exploitation. But then she says that it is not possible without peer-to-peer -peer contact and cooperation. She realized the value in the power of young people, and that you and me and Gordon mm -hmm. realize. So yeah. we work with the young people because they have 
they have tremendous power, tremendous energy, tremendous enthusiasm, tremendous idealism. And that's why we have to harness that to, to break the shackles of slavery, but also to ensure good quality education for all. If they, re, they uh, uh, raise their voices in the villages and community and at global level, no government, no policy maker, no politicians can ignore it. So the voices of young people are key to, to me. Um, I, I talked to another boy, for instance, who was working in, um, in uh, uh, making clothes uh, and doing embroidery work. He, when I rescued him, he said that while I, I was making those uh, embroidery work, I had a dream that one day my sister, who was about to be married, could wear those clothes, but that was not possible. Mm -hmm. But then he came to school after freedom, and he says that I can fulfill the dreams. Education brings the dream in the life to fulfill. So education brings light. But again, that is possible when we have honest political will, when we have a conviction and commitment, mm -hmm. when we have enough resources to put for that, which unfortunately we don't have, $39 billion, as we know, are needed to educate our children annually. And that is not a big deal. That is less than well, it's 39 a billion, but the gap is the 22 billion that 22 is missing billion, at the moment. Yeah, 22 mm. billion is a gap. And tw yeah. $22 billion is nothing, but that is just uh, less than a, a week's military expenditure. <laughs> and that's why I strongly believe that the young people can bring about the change. Mm -hmm. And uh, my foundation, Kela Satyarthi Children's Foundation, is planning to launch a massive campaign uh, involving 100 million young people to be the spokespersons, champion, leaders, and saviors on behalf of other 100 million left out children in the world. So it would be 100 million for 100 million campaign. So we are going to address both constituencies, the young people who dream to do something good for the society, they are hungry to prove something and full with idealism. If we are not, not able to harness it, they are going to be frustrated, they are going to be impatient, intolerant, and violent, which we see in many other parts of the world. So why not we build a value of global citizen, uh, citizenship by way of engaging them to become the leaders and champions for the cause of 100 million left out children in the world? Mm -hmm. Almost 100 million children are uh, victims of various kinds of violences. And wherever we work with the young people, we saw the success. So the key lies in the honesty and enthusiasm and idealism of young people at the grassroots level, at the international level, we have seen the change. Well, I know, I, I know that you summit. and Gordon <laughs> has done a great work well, in it. Well, the Social Good Summit is certainly the place to send out that message if you're recruiting your 100 million. I think you'll meet yeah, yeah, yeah. Many, I'm asking many to you, here. do you want to become one of those 100 millions or not? <laughs> Raise your hand if you wanted to be one of those 100 million. You are a little bit shy. We, you are the champions. You are the change makers. You are the leaders. I tell you, you are not just the listeners and audience. I say that those who are just standing and watching at the fence, they can be a storyteller. But those who jump in the ring, forgetting whether they would be succeed or fail, they create the history. Mm. In your leadership, in your leadership, this is the place where we are the creators of the history. Each one of you has that leadership and championship. Take it out and use for the social good for the world. We can do it. I don't believe that somebody will come from the heaven and change the world. It is you and me who is going to change the world. So, so, so. So don't be shy. If you wanted to be one of those 100 millions, raise your hand. <laughs> you Little go. bit shy, but Thank you. you should raise your hand. I'm raising my hand, don't worry. Sorry, I, thought, I thought you said young people. Yeah. Um, you, you are young. <laughs> so we've got, uh, just as we wrap up in our final minute, Keith, just to come back to you, that point of innovations from grassroots, what's the one takeaway from today to, to be one of the 100 you million? You know, uh, dream and education is synonymous and education is the mother of all design problems because if we get it right, everything else becomes solvable. So the trick is we're all the designers now and that is a big difference. And I think if we embrace it, yep. that is the path forward. Mariam? 
Well, I, I am the product of uh, not uh, having education until I was 16 years old. So it makes perfect sense that we you know, empower every si single young person, wherever you are around the world, to get education, but also use technology. We have the power to use technology to empower every single young girl. No matter where you are around the world, you can have access, but also create spaces where you can go and say, I can code, I can sit down and create tools, I can become an entrepreneur, I can become a CEO like Mariam Jam. So there you go. We have innovations, dreaming, technology, and join the 100 million. Thank you very much. Thank you.